Hi, and I am glad you have joined us. We are Pre-AP Chemistry at Allen High School working on reaction stoichiometry. And our final topic is what do we do with something called limiting reactants? So limiting reactants. In the past, one of our reactants has been said to be in excess. And so we got to ignore it the whole time. Now, that's not always true. Sometimes we have to decide which one is going to be in excess and which one is going to be our limiting. Now, what I would like you to do, if you haven't done this already, I want you to pause this video and I want you to work numbers 19 through 26. Okay, that's a little baby inquiry embedded in your notes and they're very important for understanding this concept of limiting reactants. And by the way, you may also hear the word reagent used. Reactant or reagent um, could be used in this context. Now, I'm assuming you've paused this and done 19 through 26 because it will totally help uh, the conversation. Now, I'm going to be doing something a little different. So I want you to bear that in mind that what I'm doing is a different method than what the other teachers are doing. Uh, that has its advantages. If you aren't quite grasping what I'm doing, you can go to another teacher and that teacher, he or she will show you a different way. And frankly, I'll show you the other way. I want to just give this tr way a try because I've been doing it in AP and I think it's quite helpful. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think that it has a good chance of helping us understand a key part of these types of problems. So we're going to do the s method. We're going to talk about the start and we're going to have a line for that and that means the first thing we want to do is get to moles. If you don't know how to do a problem in this unit, get to moles and you're likely going to get some partial credit. The next is to shift. We're going to lose reactant and we're going to gain product. And we have to decide how much of each we're going to do. And then we have to stop. Our stop is going to be the ending point. This is a stoichiometry. And a stoichiometry is going to go 100% until the limiting runs out, okay? The limiting goes to zero. You can't make any more because you've run out of one of your reactants. And we can talk about this more in class. I'll give you more analogies. Plus that inquiry that I asked you to do before you started this video will help you with that as well. Now, uh, we're going to do start plus shift gives us our stop. Now, once we're at our stop, we can go to whatever units the problem asks us for. And I think you will understand the concept better without memorizing steps to solving. So that's my goal, is to get to some underlying understanding of what's going on. So if you look at example 27, these are all of the parts that are in front of you. And you notice this time that we are given grams of hydrogen and grams of oxygen, both of which are reactants. And that's how you will recognize that you're dealing with a limiting reagent problem, is you're going to be given amounts of two reactants at the beginning. Now, what we want to do is the same thing we've done before. We want to determine, just like we did in the earlier ones, we're going to do it slightly differently this time. We want to determine the maximum yield. All right. Now, we're going to get that maximum yield because one of our reactants is going to run out. And that's how I'll know it's my limiting because it's going to go to zero. I'm going to run out of it first, right? So the answer to how many grams of the limiting are left over, darn well better be zero grams or we have a problem. 
Now, it's this next one that I think is going to be where we're going to see the big win with this method, okay? How many grams of excess remain? How many grams of my excess reactant are left over, okay? And then we want to combine this and tie this all together by pulling in that percent yield. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of this. We're going to do two of these. So this video, and we'll probably finish one up in the next one. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm going to set this up. I put it in a grid. You notice with my start, shift, stop. I'm going to put my amounts above like this in grams. You, it, you could be given liters at STP. You could be given milliliters and asked for a you know density, given a density. All right, so these are my two amounts. Now, honestly, I can't tell by looking at a gram to gram ratio which one of these is going to run out because these don't relate on a gram to gram level. These relate on a mole to mole level. So the first thing we want to do is convert everything we have to moles. So I'm going to start with 15.00 grams of hydrogen, and I want moles of hydrogen. Mass to moles, use molar mass. Don't forget it's diatomic. So if I solve for my moles of hydrogen, I got 7.426 moles. Now I'm going to do a similar calculation with my oxygen. So 40.00 grams of oxygen and one mole per 32 mass per to moles use molar mass. All right, and if we did 40 divided by 32, we should get 1.25. So we're going to put 1.25 moles. Now initially, before the reaction, that instant before it started, I don't have any water. That's what we're looking at for the start. Now, here's what we have to do to calculate our limiting. I need twice as much hydrogen as I have oxygen. That would mean I need roughly 2.5 moles. I have way more hydrogen than I have uh, than I need. So this must be my limiting. Now, it's intuitive if you look at it. I need two times my oxygen. So I would need, if you even want to write it up here, you would need 2.5. Well, I have 7.426. Now, in one of the next problems, I'll show you what would happen if you picked the wrong one. Don't panic if you guessed or estimated wrong. Uh, what will happen is you'll end up with a negative number at the end, and you can't have negative moles. So you just erase and go to the other as the limiting. I'm going to subtract 1.25 moles of oxygen because I've decided that I believe, based on those mole ratios, that that's my limiting given that I need twice as much hydrogen as I have oxygen. Now, here's where you want to pay close, close attention. To get to the other substances, you multiply by the mole ratio. Because for every one mole of oxygen that I lose, I'm going to lose two moles of hydrogen. So at the shift, you use your magic mole ratio. So I'm going to lose twice as much hydrogen as I do oxygen because it takes two moles to one mole. Now, I know that's my limiting. It goes to zero. Now, if I had a negative number here, I would know that I messed up big time. So that's a six, that's a two, that's a nine, and that's a four, 4.926 moles. If this had been a negative number, I would have erased all of this and started with my hydrogen, or at least erased this much, and started with my hydrogen. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the same thing in this direction. I'm going to form two moles of water for every one mole of oxygen I use. So I'm going to form 
2.50 moles. 0 plus 2.50 gives me my 2.50 moles here. Okay? Now, let's start taking a look at the questions that were asked for this one. Okay? Now, uh, question A said, how much am I going to make in grams? Well, right away in my chart, I have my moles of water. It asked me for my mass. So to do A, all I have to do is convert. Let me get that in a different color so we can see it better. My 2.50 moles that I just figured out I made, 2 grams. Mass to moles, use molar mass. 18.02 grams per 1 mole. So my answer to A is 45.05 grams. I can't make any more than that because my oxygen's run out. And if I don't have any oxygen, I can't make any water. Okay, so that's my answer to A. Now, my answer to B was which one was my limiting? I did that. I did a guesstimate, and I found out for sure, because this went to zero and this ended up positive, that it's my oxygen that's my limiting. So my answer to B is that oxygen is my limiting. And the answer to C is already here. I don't have any left over. That's the definition of the limiting, is it runs out and goes to zero. So let's take a look at what it asked for in D. This is where I think the big win is. Part D said, how many grams of my excess remain? Well, right here, I have moles of excess. If I have moles of excess, hopefully your mind can jump right to this step. Moles to mass, use molar mass. And I'm done with this part. It does ask me percent yield. But that's the most difficult part. Students had, whoops, that's an equal. Students had difficulty finding this 9.95 grams remaining. And I think the s method, if I could spell here and talk, helps you see how much is remaining. This tells me how much I form in moles. This tells me how much of my limiting is left in moles. This tells me how much of my, my excess is remaining in moles. All you have to do from there is change it to the limit that they're the unit that the question asks you for. Okay? So this would have been my answer to D. Now, it did ask me about percent yield. I'm out of room here, so I'm going to grab myself some space here. We saw that calculation already. Now, at my percent yield is going to be given the numbers they gave me. This is my theoretical, 45, I don't really like that red, it's pretty, but it doesn't look good, 45.05 grams. The question told me that my actual or experimental was 43.00 grams times 100, and that would give me E, 95.45%. Remaining or yield. Okay, that's it. That's the start, stop, shift method of doing limiting reactants. And this is going to have some big payoff when you have that wonderful opportunity of taking AP or IB chemistry. Uh, it will really help to know this method. So we're going to do two more problems like this, but until then, this is. Signing off.